so come to the webinar for the day we will uh, have an overview of gst if you have any doubt while i am explaining the pptis you can chat you can put your questions and if uh, at any time if the sound is not audible if the voice is not audible uh, more persons can re uh, chat uh, you, uh, you can put your comments that it is not audible but if one or two persons uh, for one only one or two persons it is not audible it may be a compliant uh, with their system i don't uh, it, may, it there is a chance for that so if all are telling that it is not audible i can check my system okay thank you so we will start with the overview of gst at the present stage indian tax system is consist of two taxes that is direct tax and indirect tax direct tax you will be aware mainly consist of income tax it is assessment of income earned by a person that is directly earned by a person and calculating the tax on that and paying to the income tax department and on the other side indirect tax means the tax which we are indirectly paying to the government suppose say you buy a television set or a mobile or even a toothpaste you may not be aware that you are not paying any tax to the government but in that product or in the bill it is explained that tax is included so that is called indirect tax in the current tax structure there is central tax I means uh, taxes government governed by central government that include excess duty service tax additional duty of excise surcharge and cess countervailing duty or special additional duty then regarding state tax it include what means it is uh, state tax means each state government is administered so it include value added tax cst purchase tax luxury tax surcharge and cess entry tax etc so at the present moment some taxes are governed by the central government and some taxes are governed by respective state government so there was a change in the constitution the gst law came out which empowered both central government and state government to collect tax on both goods and services because as of now for manufacturing only central government is uh, empowered to collect tax that is called central excise duty and for goods it is mainly state governments that is value added tax vat or sale tax earlier it was collected by the respective state governments but now with gst both central government and state government can tax goods and services equally so the constitution of india has been amended and as per article 246a of the indian constitution it gave power to central government as well as the state governments to levy and collect tax on both goods and services that is called gst you may be remembering this picture after a lot of uh, political debates uh, and all congress bjp and all uh, parties have agreed to uh, came out with the gst so what are the taxes that will be subsumed under gst it in good central excise duty duties of excise additional duties of excise then additional duties of customs you have to note that customs duty is not subsumed but additional duties of customs is included so customs duty is separate and only additional duties of customs is subsumed into gst and uh, special additional duties of customs service tax which is charging now uh, it is subsumed into gst then central surcharges and cesses like that so all such taxes which are indirectly governed by the central government except customs duty is mainly subsumed under gst and state taxes to be subsumed under gst it includes state what cst or central sales tax luxury tax entry tax entertainment and amusement tax you may be wondering if there was so much taxes in india yeah the indian corpus land of taxes and there are so many taxes so all these taxes will be subsumed into gst and uh, will take away a lot of headaches also so tax on advertisement purchase tax tax on lottery betting and gambling and other state surcharges and such so all these state taxes which are governed by the state governments separate state governments will be subsumed into gst and uh, the main uh, thing is uh, now if you take one 
good or one material it will be having different rates across in India in many states but that situation also will be changing and it will also change that uh, all uh, toll gates or like that it will be changing so uh, what are the principles adopted uh, for changing this taxes into GST so when there was a GST council and uh, GST council empowered the central government and state government to recommend uh, to subsume various taxes given by both central government or state government into GST so various principles followed were that the taxes or levies which were applied on supply of goods or services were taken and taxes or levies should be part of the transaction or supply chain of goods or services so all these taxes are taken then there should be free flow of tax credit on intra level or interstate levels so that is also ensured because see uh, if manufacturing in one state the uh, wholesale distributor in another state retail distributors in many states so at the present scenario they cannot uh, take credit of excess duty or a C a CST like that so a lot of issues are there and cascading effect is the tax on tax and all so all this uh, is removed and free flow of tax credit is ensured so that we can set off the input tax credit available without tax liability and revenue fairness for both governments is also ensured so all these principles were considered adopt GST then what are the benefits of uh, bringing GST so the first thing is removal of cascading effect what do you mean by cascading maybe professionals uh, or uh, such experts may be knowing cascading means it is tax on tax say when you are buying uh, from another state there will be CST central sales tax and when you are selling uh, in your state what is there and again when you are manufacturing from uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, when you are uh, buying from a manufacturer from another state there will be excess duty so actually we are calculating what on these taxes excess duty or CST whatever it may be so it will be what will be calculated on the value which include both excess duty and CST so like that it will be a uh, tax on tax effect so that will be removed and common national market you will be remembering the main slogan for a GST is one nation one tax there is a saying that all check posts will be removed from one, uh, one uh, when a vehicle is going from one state to another state there are some check posts and all and those will be removed in GSC scenario we have to see that not uh, sure so uh, there will be a common national market and reduction in the overall tax burden suppose if we take now particularly some industries the tax rate is almost 25 to 30 percent so there is a there will be a reduction in the tax burden then Indian products will be competitive in international and domestic markets because when GST is coming now there are four rates fixed can anybody tell what are the four rates please for GST rates yeah thank you thank you sir Gobal Shah sir so it is uh, actually 5, 12, 18 and 28 and there is a says for luxury goods and all what we say sin goods and all so uh, actually there is a four rates 5 12 18 and 28 so when we compare with this 25 to 30 these taxes will be less we have to practically experience such a thing so Indian products will be competitive in the international and domestic markets so when tax burden is in, uh, decreased now in the revised model GST law also the government is telling the benefit of tax reduction when GST is implemented should be passed through uh, passed it to the consumers so hope in my personal opinion it will be a reduction in the MRP and all so uh, it will ensure a competitive level of Indian products in the international domestic markets and uh, for central and state governments there will be easy administration widening of the tax base etc because particularly when input tax credit is available 
more businesses will be registered in the uh, GST system. So there will be a widening of the tax base and there will be a transparent and easier tax compliance system also. So such benefits are there when we are when the government is bring, bringing GST in India. So hope the first PPT is clear to you. We have to cover more. Any doubts if you have you can share you can uh, put it in the chat box. We have covered present tax system change in the constitution what are the central taxes that will be subsumed what are the state taxes that will be subsumed then principles adopted and benefits let us move to the second ppt without wasting time we can see how gst will be implemented features of gst gst will be levied at all stages right from manufacture up to the final consumption when you take the uh, present scenario you can know that for manufacturers there is central excise duty for uh, wholesale distributors like that it will be CST uh, means uh, when they are transferring from their level to the lens like that and for uh, dealers who are dealing in the state level what is there so central excise duty CST what all such taxes are there but in the GST scenario there will be only one tax that is GST from the suppliers level to manufacturer manufacturer level to distributor distributor level to retailer and retailer to customer the tax is named only one that is GST goods and services tax so uh, the main the thing you have to remember is B2B and B2C transactions this well, B2B means business to business and B2C means business to customer because various parties are involved supplier manufacturer distributor and retailer all these parties are businesses and especially might have been registered under the GST system at the end point only the customer will come and customer will not be registered under the GST system normally we do not register <laughs> only when we are doing business we have to register under GST so if you take business to business transactions input tax credit is available to each businesses input tax credit means see uh, we can take this manufacturer and distributor when distributor is buying from manufacturer distributor has to pay price to the manufacturer and only then they will get the distributor will get the goods from manufacturer and when distributor is paying price to the manufacturer distributor is also paying some amount as tax and this tax received by the manufacturer will be giving to the government and so distributor is indirectly paying some tax to the government distributor is paying to the manufacturer and manufacturer is paying to the government this is uh, and this tax which is indirectly paid by the uh, distributor to the government can be deducted from the total tax liability of the distributor suppose say at the end of the month distributor has collected lot of tax from retailer or various retailers so this tax collected by the distributor has to be paid to the government by the distributor but when the distributor is paying such taxes the distributor can also deduct tax indirectly paid to the government through manufacture that is called input tax credit I just explained it for understanding of all people so GST is calculated only on the value addition and in this case government is only a custodian of tax because when distributor is paying tax to the government the distributor also can claim input tax credit actually when tax is paid by the manufacturer to the government it is not an income for the government the government is only a custodian and the government has to repay the tax to the distributor 
uh, uh, through the indirect tax mechanism. And hope that point is clear to you. Little tough uh, when you hear for the first time. And at the end of the uh, process, if you take the customer, the business to consumer, that is B two C, the only point the tax will be the income of the government. In the B two B transaction, the tax received by the government is only a uh, only in the uh, level of custodian of tax because of the input tax credit mechanism. And when we take only B two C. When the customer is paying tax, that will be an income for the government. Then, destination-based tax on consumption. It is the main superior feature of the GST system because in the GST system, the destination-based tax is adopted. I will tell through it as an ex uh, example. Suppose, see, it is a state A. And it is state B. The seller is selling his goods to the state B, and who is paying uh, tax? The buyer is paying tax. Actually, at the present scenario, the government of the seller is getting the tax benefit. Suppose uh, when we are selling from Tamil Nadu to Maharashtra. The Tamil Nadu government is getting the revenue, getting the tax as of the present scenario. But in the GSC system, the benefit will go to the state government where consumer is situated. Suppose the customer is situated in Maharashtra, the seller is in Tamil Nadu, the tax will go to the government of Maharashtra where customer is located. So that is destination based tax on consumption. That is why main, uh, mainly producer states, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Gujarat, and all were making a lot of issues before uh, deciding to implement GST. Okay, so next point is dual GST. In India, dual GST is implemented. As of now, okay, that is, I can put a, as a question: How many countries are have adopt, adopted uh, GST in the world? Can anybody answer? How I repeat, how many countries have adopted GST? Okay, <laughs> again, Gobal sir, thank you. Uh, so, 160 countries have adopted GST in the world, and India is 161st, 161 uh, country to adopt. India is the 161st uh, country to adopt GST in the world. So. Among these 160 countries, some of the countries have adopted uh, du uh, dual GST and some have adopted a single GST system. Dual GST means the benefit will go to the central government as well as state government. That is called dual GST. Benefit will go to the central government as well as state government. So, uh, there is uh, three concepts actually you need to understand. That is, uh, those are the components of G tax GST, CGST, SGST, and IGST. I will explain through uh, this uh, image what we uh, get from this image. This is a state, seller and buyer is in a same state. So, in that uh, situation, means uh, uh, when seller and buyer both are in the same state, it is called as intra state. In trusted within the state. So in that case, CGST and SGST will apply. CGST means central GST and SGST means state GST. And CGST collected will go to the central government and SGST collected will go to the state government. Okay. And if you take the second scenario, the seller is in state A and buyer is in state B. So the central government uh, will be collecting IGST and it will be divided among central government and state government that is called IGST integrated goods and services tax the administration is done by the, the central government so it will be called as interstate that is outside the state so there are two scenarios intrastate and interstate 
in the interest intra state within the state cgst and sgst will be applied cgst will go to the central government and sgst will go to the state government and in the second scenario it is from one state to another state inter state igst will be applied that is integrated goods and services tax it will be divided among uh, the central government and state government hope the points are clear to you so again uh, there are uh, various rates for cgst or sgst and igst okay thank you murthy sir so uh, there are three components cgst sgst and igst just what i told them repeats uh, cgst it is for central government sgst for state government igst for both central government and state government then administration of gst administration is done by central government for both cgst and igst and respective state governments will be administering sgst and uh, some points are yet to be cleared uh, there are uh, hot debates going in the gst council so more clarity will coming to the administration of the uh, gst system then calculation of gst how we have to calculate gst on goods and services all supplies all supply of goods and services will be charged to gst except exempted goods and services and uh, goods which are outside the purview of gst and the transaction which are below the prescribed threshold limits so except all the, these three points all other goods and services will be charged to gst suppose uh, we take uh, one example wholesale dealer of steel in mumbai supplies steel bars to a construction company which is also located in nagpur so both companies are in uh, maharashtra only the value of goods is 10000 so the gst charge is 28% 28% consists of sgst 14% and cgst 14% and this 14% sgst has to be paid to the state government which state government maharashtra that is intra state intra state so there is no question so cgst 1400 to be paid to the central government and again as uh, these are both uh, uh, businesses input tax credit can be claimed so uh, the person who is paying tax that is construction company can claim the input tax credit on the taxes paid to the the wholesale dealer and indirectly paid to the government so in the sense here the sale value was for 10000 28% gst was charged 28% consist of sgst 14% and cgst 14% sgst will go to the state government and cgst will go to the central government hope the points are clear to you so let us take the second example same thing advertisement company providing advertising services to manufacturing in the same state so value of goods is 10000 the rate is 28% 14% that is 1400 will go to the state government 1400 will go to the central government and the uh, business can claim all taxes paid to the for the expense stationery purchased office equipment purchased remuneration to artists all such uh, payments are subject to gst so all gst paid to for such parties can be claimed as input tax credit and such tax paid can be deducted from the total tax liability suppose say uh, we have paid a, a tax of 500 rupees oh it is a little difficult to write okay so uh, suppose say 2800 is the total tax liability okay so what is the next uh, net uh, tax uh, that is to be paid that is 2800 minus 500 2300 only we have to pay because 500 tax we have already paid for stationery office equipment remuneration charges so that is input tax okay so we are the at the end of the second uh, ppt we will take a short break of 2 minutes okay we will come back again within after 2 minutes so if you have any doubts you can uh, write down in the chat box 
we have to complete uh, three more ppts in the first chapter itself actually i had an idea of completing three chapters but it is not possible today but we will cover three cha uh, sub chapters three ppts more thank you we will take a short break of two minutes yeah gst beginner course shall be fully video based sir all our courses are coming with uh, video based only uh, and uh, the franchises also will be getting a ppt benefit means uh, you can explain uh, means you can teach students uh, using this uh, pppts we are making such changes in our learning management system so uh, your faculty can uh, or yourself can learn uh, seeing the views and through webinars and when you are teaching in your centers you can use ppts not uh, how to use the video tutorial the students always don't want to see my face <laughs> yeah we will uh, we are planning like that means uh, th there will be separate webinars for tally and for gst for gst we have fixed tuesdays and friday and for tally we have fixed monday and uh, thursday so in a week at least we will have four days webinars okay let us uh, come to the ppt in this ppt we will take a liability of the taxpayer how the liability will be fixed so tax is payable by the taxable person on the supply of goods and services so whenever a taxable person is supplying goods or services a person registered under the gst act or is liable to get uh, registered under the gst act is liable to pay gst so taxable person means uh, the person who are raised normally the person who have registered under the gst and there are two levels for normal business persons 20 lakhs and 10 lakhs two levels means for some states it is 20 lakhs and for some states it is 10 lakhs for all normal I means uh, for all uh, states except northeastern states it is 20 lakhs when they are crossing 20 lakhs they have to get and uh, how to collect tax and pay to the government and for northeastern states it will be 10 lakhs northeastern state means uh, Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, Tripura, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir all such states so all such states has uh, register themselves if they cross 10 lakhs and uh, they have to collect tax and pay to the government if they cross 10 lakhs and taxpayers below threshold limits will be exempted they have the option of paying tax with input tax credit benefits means if the taxpayers are below these levels 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs if a person is in Tripura or Arunachal Pradesh or Assam Meghalaya, Manipur, whatever may be and his tenor is below 10 lakhs he has only a tenor of 8 or 9 lakhs but he wish to register under the GSE system he can do so he can register under the GSE system and can collect and pay tax and for other states like Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Kerala or other uh, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana if the uh, person have below 20 lakhs turnover if they will to register if they wish to register they can do so they can collect tax and have to pay to the government and the main benefit of registering under the GST uh, system is availing of input tax credit so actually it will be a uh, difficult situation for the unregistered persons because their price may be little higher than the registered persons because they cannot claim input tax credit they cannot deduct tax indirectly paid to the suppliers from their total tax liability so all has to register of course then this threshold exemption this 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs is applicable only to persons who ha who are doing intrastate business means if a person is in Tamil Nadu he is supplying to customers only in Tamil Nadu he can uh, apply this uh, threshold limits but if they are making interstate supply if the Tamil Nadu person is making supply to the Maharashtra or Kerala they have to register under the GSC system 
and this threshold exemption will not be applicable. And there is a reverse charge uh, basis mechanism that is applicable on the case of imports. In the case of imports, one person has to, the buyer, the receiver has to pay tax. So that is the liability of the taxpayer in the first stage. And the, on the next slide, we have to understand what is the meaning of aggregate turnover. We have uh, learned that 20 lakhs and 10 lakhs it is applicable to the aggregate turnover. And what do you mean by aggregate turnover? How to calculate? This aggregate turnover shall include the aggregate value of all taxable and non-taxable supplies, exempt supplies and exports of goods or services. But as per the reverse model GST law, there was a change. All interstate supplies will be added and non-taxable supplies are excluded. So when you are uh, calculating the this turnover, you can uh, get a professional opinion. And uh, taxes uh, can be excluded, GST and all. And aggregate turnover will be calculated on all India basis. OK, uh, Nilesh, sir, so the reverse charge mechanism mainly means the buyer has to pay tax. Normally, the seller will be collecting price from the receiver, the customer. And the seller has to pay tax to the government in the normal scenario. But under the reverse charge mechanism, the buyer has to pay tax. Suppose one person has imported some goods from another uh, country, say China. When they, uh, the buyer in India is importing uh, those goods from China, the Indian buyer has to pay tax to the government. That is a reverse charge. Means the buyer has to pay tax directly to the government. Hope the point is clear to you. It is a difficult point. It is a. Uh, uh, it will be applicable only in such scenarios where uh, means uh, mainly for imports. Yeah, that is true. And next is composition scheme. As in the VAT system and all, now it also it is prevailing. Small tax base with an aggregate turnover in a financial year up to rupees 50 lakhs shall be eligible for composition levy. Composition levy means you have to multiply the tax into your turnover and should pay that tax. No need of calculating input tax credit, deduction from tax liability, nothing like that. If your aggregate turnover is, is say uh, 40 lakhs, your aggregate turnover is uh, 40 lakhs and if you have opted for composition scheme and the rate is 1%, you have to pay tax 40 lakhs into 1% directly to the government. That is called composition scheme. And he cannot claim the benefit of input tax credit. No uh, input tax credit can be deducted from this tax. And he cannot collect any tax. That is the main thing. From customers, he should not collect any tax. Okay. If his aggregate turnover is 40 lakhs, he has to just multiply with 1%. That is the notified rate, whatever it may be. Now, as of now, 2.5% uh, is, is fixed for manufacturers and 1% for dealers. So that is to be directly paid to the government. And he should not collect any tax from the customers. And he cannot deduct any uh, ITC. The conversation scheme is will be optional. The customer and the business person can decide. And ta uh, taxpayer can, uh, making any interstate supply or paying tax on reverse charge basis shall not be eligible for composition. So it will be applicable only for the persons who are doing intrastate business. If a person in Tamil Nadu, that person if he is supplying to Maharashtra or Delhi or West Bengal, he cannot opt for composition scheme, even though his turnover is below 50 lakhs. And uh, the next thing is classification of goods and services. In the GST system, all goods will be coded with the harmonized system of nomenclature. HSN means it is a universal code used in other countries also. And all products will be with their own HSN code. Suppose say for pineapple, we call it as pineapple in English. In Malayalam also we call it as pineapple usually, but it is called as Kaide Chaka or whatever maybe. 
in tamil nadu west bengal or in any in many states it is called with a different different names so people cannot easily understand what it is only they, when they see the product they can understand oh this is the thing and in uh, some countries english also not popular so it will the pineapple will be called it with a different name so that is why the uh, uh, harmonized system of nomenclature specific code is allotted for each product so uh, this hsn code is applied for each product each goods so for pineapple we can say it is 0804.30.10 that is the norm, uh, hsn code for pineapple and for services service accounting code will be applied then for imports we are explaining <laughs> imports imports of goods and services will be treated as interstate supplies and igst will be levied on import of goods and services on imports igst is levied the incidence of tax will follow the destination principle tax revenue in case of sgst will accrue to the state where it is consumed so if a person is in uh, say delhi and he has imported some goods the tax paid that is igst paid on such imports by the buyer under reverse charge will go to the delhi state government and that is a sgst portion then a full and complete set of will be available on the gst paid on imports of goods and services that is uh, the input tax credit like that. okay regarding exports exports will be treated as zero rated supplies no tax will be payable for exports so that is a happy news so uh, there will not be any tax and it will be the products will be competitive in the international market also and credit of input tax credit will be available and same will be available as refund to exporters that is uh, the whatever the input tax credit used for making the exports that will be available to the uh, business person and they can claim it as a refund from the government the input tax credit for goods or services that is used for exported goods that will be a refund and commodities outside the purview of gst we don't want to think all products will be all services will be applied in gst means mainly products uh, so some products are uh, outside the purview of gst like alcohol petroleum products that is petroleum crude motor spirit high speed diesel natural gas and aviation turbine fuel etc electricity so all these products will be outside gst gst will not be applicable and the existing taxation system what central excise extra will continue for such goods so we don't want to uh, say that what central excise everything will be deleted from the indian tax system no this what and central excise will follow for such products which are exempted from gst and what is the position of tobacco and tobacco products it will be subject to gst and uh, central would have the power to levy central excise duty on these products also so maybe double tax will come okay central so uh, some points are get to be cleared so i think there will be a double taxation means uh, means uh, this, there will be uh, ta uh, two taxes applied on the tobacco products so that is the end of the another big ppt in this uh, we have extend liability of the taxpayer how to calculate aggregate turnover what is composition scheme how we are classifying goods or services using hsn and uh, service accounting code what is the status of imports exports and uh, what are the commodities outside the purview of gst and tobacco and tobacco products i will take one uh, one or two more ppts i'll be happy to sit here and uh, to share the points if you don't mind say uh, let us take gst okay let us take gst council okay uh, gst council gst council is very important term or factor in the gst mechanism because gst council is taking various decisions so we will understand what is the meaning of gst council a gst council will be constituted and the members are 
Union Finance Minister, he will be the Chairman of the Council, Minister of State Revenue and various finance or taxation ministers representing each state. So there will be a GST Council and they will be taking the uh, they will be discussing the issues and taking various decisions and decision by GST council how it is taken for taking any decision majority of three-fourth of the weighted odds that is very very important no, not it, it is directly not majority of three-fourth it is three-fourth of the weighted odds so how weighted odds will be uh, called the weighted odds means central government will be having one third voting power and rest of all state governments will be having a total of two third voting uh, weighted odds only okay so central government is very powerful all other state governments is uh, total will be two third only. so of this weighted odds three fourth will should be uh, done in favor of the decision to get it passed and what is a quorum for any meeting to be uh, valid there should be a quorum so at least 50 percent of the members of the GST council should be present then what are the recommendations they can give all this all uh, suggestions tax assessor surcharges whatever to be subsumed in the under GST taxable or exempted goods what should be taxable what should be exempted then date on which GST shall be levied on petroleum or other products GST laws principles etc threshold limit of turnover rates additional rates special uh, provision with respect to states like Jammu and Kashmir I am happy to <laughs> say that we have got uh, one franchise from Jammu also. so any other matter relating to GST so all such because see, I, I just uh, said uh, about Jammu and Kashmir because Normally, all taxes are not applicable in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. So, uh, in the case of GST, this uh, I mean service tax is also not applicable. So, in the case of GST, Jammu and Kashmir will be subject to uh, tax. So, GST is applicable to uh, Jammu and Kashmir also. So, they have to learn it. Our franchise is there. Okay. So, harmonization. Harmonization on different respects of GST between the center and states is very important. There will be a lot of disputes. There was dispute, there is dispute and there will be dispute. So there should be a proper mechanism to settle any dispute between central government and states on one side and other states on other side or two between two states, one state on one side and another state on other side. So all these problems should be settled off. So that is uh, about GST Council. That was a small PPT, Constitution of GST Council, decision by GST Council. What are the recommendation? How harmonization will be ensured? And last uh, PPT for uh, the first chapter, that is GST network. What is mean by GST network? GSTN, goods or services tax network. It is a common GST portal. Now all business people are migrating from existing system to new system. And that is through a process of enrollment using the GST common portal. It is still under the development. And uh, it will be used for registration, paying taxes, file returns, apply for refund, to generate various MIS reports, uh, integrating with the existing tax administration, ITC, etc interface for taxpayers and governments there will be backend modules for assessment appeal audit etc so it is mainly GST count bottle that is a uh, online software which is facilitating all services then integration of systems integration of GST front-end system with the backend system is an essential factor there will be a shared IT infrastructure for central and state governments taxpayers and other stakeholders all such facilities will be there for uh, uh, filing, registration, uh, approval, appeals, all such matters whatever it is there it will be uh, through the GST convert and the important fact it is to be completed and tested 
for making the transition from existing system to GST system smooth. And functions of GSTM, facilitating registration, various returns, computation and settlement of IGST because IGST is to be shared between the central government and state government. So there should be a mechanism. Then matching of tax payment, provide various reports, input tax credit, and also of tax profile, etc. I put uh, again one question before you. Who is developing this GSTN? Can anybody answer, please? I repeat the question. Who is uh, developing GSTN? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, both Nilesh and Danu has answered correctly. Thank you for that. Infosys is developing the, the GSTN. I have shown that uh, our study material in the beginning, it con uh, consists of 15 chapters. And the 15th chapter, the last chapter, is about GSTN. That is a detailed chapter. We will understand what is the GSTN, what is the ecosystem, what is the GST Suvida provider, how to upload the invoices, everything is there. So that is the about that chapter. So that is the end of the first chapter. That is about GSTN. How do you feel uh, you want to continue the webinar or how to stop here and uh, we'll see you on Friday. Friday 4 p.m. I am ready to take more, maybe for another half an hour at least. I uh, request all of you to answer. Yeah, all can answer please. <laughs> okay, I am getting more answers. Uh, go ahead to continue one more PPT. Okay, I will continue with the uh, second chapter also. That is no problem because I am happy to always teach. Teaching is my passion, sharing my points. <laughs>